Hello, you know what time it is. Well, let me invite some people because you know that's what I do. Let's see. Invite some people. Let's see what we can do here. Bear with me just a moment. And I'm going to just invite some people. Bear with me. Let's see who we can get up here. Welcome to all who is already up here. I'm just inviting some people to see. So bear with me just a moment. Just a moment. Let's see here. All right. Get some people on there on the line, right? I'm excited to talk today because I got something for you. I do, I do, I do. Something I learned and I can't wait to share it. I can't wait. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm trying to contain myself. You just have no idea. So bear with me. All right. All right. Let's see here. All right. Hey, Tay. I see you, girl. How you doing? Welcome. It's Fly Friday. Woo -woo. I'm so excited, y'all. Listen, first things first, we got to just get things out the way. Hey, Miss Butts. I see you up here. Listen, y'all, let me tell you, first of all, while Miss Butts is up here, she is fabulous. She is my neighbor, but she's also my friend and she is also family. And she is my paparazzi consultant. Can you not tell by just this gorgeous, wonderful set that I have on? Listen, we got the earrings. We got the necklace. We got the ring to match. Come on through with the bracelet. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. We have to get those out the way. Give honor where honor is due, okay? And she is doing a great job. So if you need some, just hit her up. Just send her a direct message. She got you. So... But today is Fly Friday, and let me just give those who are new up here some caveat to what Fly Friday means to me, and then you can share it with your friends. But fly to me means whatever makes you feel fly. Maybe it's a favorite shirt, or maybe, like in my case now, I'm getting into this little bit of jewelry and having fun with that. So you can wear fly jewelry, or you can wear like... Your hair can be fly, like you just got it done. You can put on a fly face, you know. Hey, open up the oyster. It's yours, okay? And so for me, I've just been having fun with Fly Friday, just trying different stuff from makeup to skincare to my hair. I try to put in this little bun, y'all. You have to forgive me, like, because I really wanted to make sure that these amazing earrings could be seen. And so for me... That's what Fly Friday stands for. You can be fly in your own way. So, but let's talk about this word that I've studied for this week. So in my heading, right, I said, do you know CPR? Okay, so most people are going to see it and be like, is she getting ready to perform CPR on this live? No, but it is good to know and to be certified in. I know when I was a teenager, I had to know CPR, the Heimlich Maneuver, you know, 911, all the emergency things because I was babysitting not only my siblings, but other people's kids. So it's important to know and you should definitely get certified. It's, it's something that's good to know and good to have. Um, and I want to just give a shout out to all my frontline brothers and sisters that are out there day in and day out where, listen, you are facing it head on and I appreciate you. Just know like I'm praying for you. I'm keeping you lifted and that you are a very important part of what is going on in God's masterpiece of a plan. And so um, for that, I thank you. Thank you for being who you are. Um, for doctors, nurses, firefighters, uh, EMTs, I mean, from the beginning to the end, y'all are number one, okay? 
And so for that, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. Even let's be grateful for school nurses, okay? Because some of our children are back in school. And so now not just the nurse has be is like a nurse. Now the teachers are stepping up and they're frontline workers too. And I just want to give credit to them. And they now have to become like nurses. You know, somebody call for something, we got to be on high alert because we just, you don't know. So. I want to commend our teachers as well. I know a lot of teachers. I have a lot of sisters who, uh, in Christ who are teachers. And for that matter, really, technically speaking, we're all teachers. Because if you have children, and even if you don't have children, you know somebody with children, and they kind of become like nieces and nephews. And so you're attached to some type of the next generation. And so you're a teacher, a nurse, a counselor. You sum up everything to this child. So... Be careful what you say and be careful what you do because there's always somebody watching. Always, 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 always. So the other thing that I want to talk about, because we're going to tie this into what I want to just, because I'm so excited about. Now, last week, I told you guys that I didn't want to go all the way into the Shudamite woman because I wanted to kind of give you a little anticipation. So... The anticipation is no more, I'm going to tell you. So when I asked you in the heading, I said, do you know CPR? And so for me, CPR is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, right? This is the motion or the action that we do to attempt to save somebody's life. Well, for me, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> for me, that's important. CPR is important. But you know what? We ain't come up with that. We didn't come up with that. Hey, I see you. How you doing, girl? Miss Coleman, it's nice to have you in the room. Um, we're just getting into what I was so excited about last week about the Shudamite woman. Okay, so I was reading and studying about the Shudamite woman. And let me just tell you, first of all, she's phenomenal. You can find this for yourself because I believe in studying like Timothy said, you got to study to show yourself approved unto God. Okay. And you have to rightly divide the word of truth yourself. So this is found in 2 Kings chapter 4, starting at around verse 38. I mean, 8 to around 37, 38. And so for me, I got my Bible right here in front of me because, you know, I don't, I don't go anywhere without my sword. I keep it in clutch because you just never know. Just word to the wise. And so with the Shudamite woman, what I want to show you and tell you about is this woman is known as a great woman, okay? In some translations, it says wealthy. But in my research, I found out that great and wealthy, while it's affiliated with financials, it could also very well, in some other studies say, that she was wise beyond her years, I was like, oh, I can relate to that. I've been told that I'm very mature for my age. So that's relatable. Like, okay, well, this woman is also known to be hospitable. We're all supposed to be hospitable. We're supposed to love on one another and welcome in those that are in need. And she does this. But she does this to Elisha, the prophet who came after Elijah, Right, We got to make emphasis on which one we're talking about because the sound of their names are the same and the spelling is really close. They're like probably one letter off, <laughs> give or take. So this prophet is doing the Lord's business and he's coming down the main road and she sees him with his servant Gehazi. And she's like, hey, you know, you need some food to eat? You need, you need something to eat? Okay, I got you. Come on in. Come on in. I got you. And so she invites him to the dinner table. And this becomes an ongoing thing for her and for her husband. Let me not leave him out of the picture. And so she becomes so acquainted with him coming through this main strip of Shunem that she says, you know, honey, since he's going to be coming through here doing the Lord's business, why don't we just make a room for him? I would love that. What do you think? And he agrees. 
And so she and her husband make this upper room for just for him and Gehazi. When they come through, they have a place not only to get food and drink, but now they can spend some time in the upper room where there is one bed, one table, one chair or stool, one candlelight. And so this is a place where they can come and kind of refresh themselves. Kind of like an Old Testament. I mean, you could say hotel, maybe Airbnb. I'm still learning the terms of this time with those fancy places to stay. Needless to say, I haven't been at one. So, so she's uh, elated about this room and so is Elisha. And he's so overwhelmed by the love that she made this room for him. He's like, we got to do something for her. So he's like, hey, come here. Let me ask you, like, can I go to the king for you? Can I go and like get something for you? And she's like, oh, no, I'm good. I'm so good. Like, you don't have to worry about that. I live amongst my people. I'm straight. But that thing sat a little different with me this time, right? Why would a woman, you're in the presence of like the man of God. Like this is like being in the presence of the embodiment of the Lord. Like he's carrying the spirit of God upon him. And my question was, was she so content with her life? That she almost was like, she was in almost complacency. That she didn't want to receive a blessing from the Lord. That got me to thinking. So I leave that with you to chew on. And so then we proceed and Gehazi kind of checks out the lay, lay of the land and says to Elisha, hey, like her husband kind of old and she don't have no children. And Elisha was like, there it is. That's what we're going to do. We're going to bless her. That's what we're going to do. Call her back here. Call her back here. And so he tells her, this time next year, you're going to have a son. And she was like, oh, no, 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 no. Uh-uh. Mm-mm. No, don't lie to me. Don't tell me. Don't get my hopes up for this. Like, don't do that. And so for me, I was just like, wait a minute, woman. Like, what are you doing? Don't you want children like this during these times? Listen, women having children, women who are married having children at this time, this is like your legacy. You're supposed to be having children. This is kind of like your assignment to multiply the earth. And she said, no, I was trying to figure that out. And so she uh, has the child. God wastes no time because when God prophesies over your life, He's going to be specific. He's going to tell you the details and it's going to be just for you. Regardless if you got faith in him or hope in him, his word is going to come to pass. Okay. For your life. You can count on that. So then we fast forward and the child now kind of comes of age and he goes out like all sons to learn what their father does. In his case, he's a reaper and he has grain and is in the field. Well, then all of a sudden something happens with his head. And he's like, my head, my head. And the father decides to tell his servant, hey, take take the boy to his mama. Now, let's talk about, first of all, I had a moment. I did because what kind of father are you that you you're not watching over this this boy? At least if you can't carry him because you're old, like at least give the decency to go with the servant to be curious as to what's going on with your son. Now, that's just me having a moment. But, you know. That's what I saw. And so the servant gets the boy to his mother and the mother is holding him and the boy dies. I was like, wait a minute, Lord, you didn't bless this woman with this child and he dies. What, what's up with that? So here's what I thought was remarkable is instead of her wailing and having a moment and mourning and hollering, this woman carries the boy up the stairs to the room that she made for the man of God and lays him on the bed and then closes the door. She goes down the stairs and she sends a servant saying, hey, I need a uh, sends for her husband and says, hey, I need a donkey and I need a servant. And so her husband, again, I'm telling you this young man who was not named, thank goodness, because. I think we would have had another issue with him if he was named. Her husband says, what? well, why you got to go see the man of God today? I mean, it's not like it's, you know, church. 
worship experience, Sunday service, Bible study. Why you got to go today? It's not the Sabbath. She was like, it is well. And that's all. And just kept on going. And so she went on this donkey to go find the man of God. Excuse me. Excuse me. I got a whiff of something. All right. This is all this excitement. (laughs) Anyway, she goes about her business to see this man of God. She gets to a point where Gehazi tells Elisha far off. They can see her coming. He's like, um, the Shumite woman is coming. She's fastly approaching. And so Elisha sends the servant to go and see, you know, hey, is it well with your husband? Is it well with your child? And so she tells the servant, it is well. I mean, it takes great faith. Something within her had to be fired up for her to say, it is well. She kind of pushes him to the side and keeps right on riding because she wants to see the man of God. So for me, when I take a look at that, when I look at that, I say, listen here, Shudamite woman, you have got to have some type of commitment to the Lord to say, you know what? God gave me this blessing, this child, this son, and it is to God in whom I'm going to seek about why you would allow this child to die. For those of you that are just joining, we are in 2 Kings chapter 4, around verse 8 to about 37, 38. And so we are now uh, approaching where she comes to Elisha and she kind of lunges at his feet. Can you picture like a child who's probably like two or three, how they used to just hang onto your leg and they're not going to let it go? Excuse me, y'all. I got to get a tissue. Man, my nose is running. Pardon me. Ah, that sneeze got me. (laughs) Forgive me. So, so she's hanging on and she is crying out. It's almost like me picturing me in like my quiet time with God and I'm laying prostrate and I'm like, God, you got to help me. And so Gehazi is sent. Elijah sends him and says, take my staff and put it on the boy's head. And so he does and he comes back and he's like, the boy still did. So now Elisha goes with the woman. And he goes in the house and he goes up to the room and he shuts the door. Y'all, listen. Let me tell you something. I'm so excited about this thing. And so in verse 33, I'm going to read it straight for you. And we can get excited then. It says, he went in, shut the door, and the two of them meaning him and Gehazi. And he prayed to the Lord. Now I'm reading this in the NIV, but you read whichever translation works best for you. Then he got on the bed and he lay on the boy, mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. And as he stretched himself out on him, the boy's body grew warm. And 35 says, Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room. And then he got on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times and opened his eyes. Y'all, listen, my nose running, but at this point, I hope you don't see any boogers. (laughs) Anyway, um, I'm excited. Did you catch it? Did you hear it? Okay, it says, first of all, the first thing we're supposed to do, pray. Everything. You invite God into every situation regardless of what it looks like, regardless of what it feels like, regardless of what the facts say. That's the first thing you do. Okay. Then in 34, it says he lay on the boy mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. Did you catch it? Mouth to mouth. My goodness. God did CPR. But here's the thing. You're thinking CPR as in cardiopulmonary resuscitation. Uh-uh. Nuh-uh. He did Christ-produced resurrection. Now, how about that for CPR? How about that 
for CPR? Can you get excited over knowing that God is the author and the creator and the manufacturer of everything we hold dear? He said, I, I'm the one that's in charge of when you do CPR because I'm the one that gives life and I'm the one that can take life away. Mouth to mouth resuscitation right here in the Bible. Now, some of y'all gonna be like, well, who would have thought? Uh, God did. And clearly we need to be in here reading so we can know, okay, when we enter into a room where CPR got to be done, first thing we need to do is pray. Then we do CPR because we've invited God into the room and God dictates what happens. And that's him. Christ produced resuscitation. Christ produced resurrection. That's all I'm going to say to that. But here's what I also want you to see. This is how you know Christ entered to the room. It says that it was mouth to mouth, eyes to eyes, hands to hands. So if you stretch yourself out as an adult on top of a child, what symbol is that? It's the cross. Point number two, it's the cross. Right there is resurrection. And because he prayed, he invited him in. And then we see the symbolism of the cross with him laying stretched out on the boy. Then if you zoom out just a little bit and picture the room and picture the door, God said, look, it's the tomb just in a different symbol. I said, God, you so good. Oh, you so good. You so, so, so good. Thank you. I appreciate you, God, for teaching me about CPR. Christ produced resurrection. I am grateful that you know mouth to mouth, God. I'm grateful. Absolutely grateful. Now, verse 35. Don't think I left you hanging. Verse 35 says, now, for those of you that may be just joining, we are in 2 Kings chapter 4, and we are at verse 35. We are nearing the, the finishing touches. And it says that Elisha turned away and walked back and forth in the room and then got back on the bed and stretched out on him once more. The boy sneezed seven times, and then he opened his eyes. So I had to ask the Lord, like, why seven? Why sneezes, first of all? Like, y'all saw that I had to sneeze, unfortunately. And that produced, like, snot. Let me tell y'all something. I don't like snot at all. I don't know why the Lord had to create snot, but I, I mean, I get it. But God showed me that in that study, he referred to a New Testament teaching to me, which was, you remember in the book of Mark, where Jesus heals a blind man. Now he was healing lots of blind people. He was. But this particular blind man, he touched his eyes and he said, what do you see? And he said, uh, well, my eyes, it's kind of blurry. Uh, the man looked like, like trees. And then he touched them again and he could see. So this was a gradual process. Remember that God's blessings, sometimes they come gradually because you can't just take it all in at once. It's to take you faith to faith and glory to glory. One predicates on the next, kind of like math, which when I was in high school and all the other grades, I liked math, but excuse me, y'all. But when I got to college, that they shut me down out of math. I, I didn't like it after that. <laughs> and so, gradual. There are gradual blessings. And we have to count it all joy through that process. Okay? Now, you're thinking, okay, now 36 says that he summoned Gehazi and said, call the Shudamite woman. And he did. And when she came in, he, Elisha said, now take your son. And the boy was taken into his mother's arms and she came in and fell at his feet and bowed to the ground. And then she took him and went out. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. But see, the story doesn't stop here. That's the beauty of our God is that it doesn't stop. 
It doesn't stop here. If you go over to chapter 8, just turn the page, right? Chapter 8 in 2 Kings, verses 1 through 6. Guess what you'll see? You'll see that Shudamite woman again. You will. Elisha and her keep their relationship. Remember now, she's hospitable. So as he comes through that place, that's where he stops. And so for me, I was excited about that. I was excited at the fact that they continued their relationship. It's not over till the Lord say so. So you go to that chapter and you see that Elisha comes back to tell her, hey, there's about to be a famine in the land. Let me tell you something. When God gives you a heads up, you better adhere to his warning, to his alert. You better just know. You better write it down. You better get prepared. He's warning you. Okay, this is about to come. I feel like he warned us about this quarantine, but uh, we ain't paid too much of attention. You understand what I'm saying? Y'all excuse me. I got a little running nose from all that sneezing. And so in chapter 8, as we continue, he warns her, and of all places, she gets up, right? Which shows me that she no longer was in her place of contentment or complacency as she was before when she told Elisha, oh, I'm good. You know, I dwell amongst my people. She matured from that. And so she gets up and she goes to Philistine country. Of all places. But listen, God takes care of her even there. Because God, when he has you, has like his hand on your life, you could probably sit in enemy territory like we are right now and be good and be so good. Oh, and well taken care of and provided for. For seven years, she was there. And then when she went back to see her home and her property and her land, man, that thing... Tell about the frame, y'all. Let me get to the page so I can tell y'all about that right here on the next one. She went to uh, her hand to her land. It says, at the end of seven years, she came back from the land of the Philistines and went to appeal to the king for her house and land. That's what it says. So she goes to the king, and little, little, little Gehazi, Elisha's servant is there with the king. And what makes this exciting is that he's getting ready to tell the story of the woman whose son was raised to life. And at the, what do we call it? Perfect timing, because God is divine and perfect in everything. She walking in the room, okay? And Gehazi is like, oh my gosh, king, like, uh, this is her. This is the woman, like, you see her? And so, guess what happens? The king is like, is this true? Is this story? Tell me more about it. So she tells her story and all that took place. And you know what the king said? Let me tell you what he said. Then he assigned an official to her case and said to him, give back everything that belonged to her. Wait for it. When God not only meets your expectation. He is about to exceed your expectation, including all the income from her land from the day she left the country until now. My God, he fully restored this woman from the beginning to the end. Let me tell you all something. The other thing that I want to just leave you with is this. Make room for God. Don't ask him to enlarge your territory. Ask him to enlarge his presence in your life. That's what this woman did. She enlarged his presence in her life. And for that, he honored her and restored her mightily. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all she could ever ask or think. Right? Amazing. Well, I hope that blessed y'all. I hope you understand that God is in charge of CPR. Now you know what real CPR is. That is Christ-produced resurrection. 
It's a beautiful thing. And I'm so glad I got to share it with y'all, just like it was shared with me. So, for that, I'm grateful. I thank everyone who came on today. I appreciate you. I hope you, you learned something. I hope you'll go back and restudy. I hope it will bless you and you can share it with somebody else because I believe the word of God is fruitful. You take a seed from it. You plant it in yourself and it produces fruit. And then you take that same fruit and harvest it and plant it in somebody else. We should be sharing nonstop. Now, let me tell you, the word does say you should be talking about it. From the time you get up to the time you go to bed and do it over again and over again. Let me tell you, I'm grateful for this. This has blessed me so. I'm very excited. Um, I appreciate you guys again. This has been fun. I hope again that you will come back next Friday. I have a little more for you uh, regarding the Shudamite woman. And uh, well, and I may change it up. Who knows? I will seek the face of the Lord and say, what would you have me to share? Because I ask him all the time. And so with that, I will leave you with God bless you. God keep you. May his face shine upon you. May his grace cover you. And may he look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Not as the world gives, but his eternal permanent peace. You be blessed this weekend, and I will see you next Friday at 5 with me, Flo. Ta-ta for now. Mwah.